Lynn Ellsworth. I'm chair of the Human Scale NYC Network in New York. We're a network of about 100 community organizations. I'm also co-coordinator of the Empire Station Coalition, which you see behind me. This is a group of about 15 neighborhood and civic and transit organizations around the city who have come together to say that this project that Vernado has convinced the governor to do is a bad project and we need an alternative. So let me go with my remarks and then we'll meet some of the people in the community. So I want to ask you, can there be a better plan for Penn Station than what is now proposed? Yes. So in the current plan, our city and state government appears to have given up on finding ways to do economic development that might generate widespread prosperity. They are not looking for ways to lift all boats. Instead, they have fallen prey to an addiction, squeezing more and more property taxes out of each building in the city. Locked into the idea that property taxes are the same thing as economic development, city and state seek to alter the demographics of the city, get rid of poor and working class people, and replace them with much richer people who can pay higher property taxes. In their mind, the city's job is to liberate real estate developers and subsidize them to build luxury housing and luxury office space for the wealthiest people in the world. Just this week, a staffer at the deputy mayor's office told a member of our coalition, we need buildings that produce the kind of revenue New York State needs. It is this twisted way of thinking that leads us to the present situation and to here on the steps of the Church of St. John the Baptist. The Empire State Development Corp, the governor, and Vernado are now playing Robin Hood in reverse. They are taking from people who have taken a vow of poverty and they are giving it to the rich. They seek to demolish the home, the parish hall, and the church of Capuchin Friars who have served the poor of this neighborhood since 1870 and whose value to the world cannot be monetized. The governor will give their home over to Vernado, one of the richest and largest real estate investment trusts in the world. Vernado will build here, on this site, a new glass super tall for class A office space, the kind that charges the highest rents that the market can bear. Does the $300,000 in campaign contributions to go former Governor Cuomo and nearly as much to Hochul explain why Vernado is the winner here? Yes. Are we expected to believe the fairy tale that those future rents that Vernado's towers will generate in 16 years or so are needed to pay for the improvements to Penn Station? No. There are alternative ways to pay for these improvements that have not been investigated. And not content with evicting the friars, they want to tear down the entire block. They will evict, by our count, 2,300 households and all the project sites with a net loss of housing units. They also seek to demolish dozens of historic buildings that are eligible for listing in the National Registry of Historic Places. But evictions and property seizures are not necessary to get the money to improve Penn Station or to get the Penn Station that we dream of or to have widespread prosperity in this city, a city we want, a city that still has Franciscan friars in it. There is a better way. In fact, there are multiple better ways. Just one of them is to give, have a policy of nurturing and growing our small business sector. Small businesses are the true engine of job growth in our country. This bustling neighborhood is in fact thriving. It is full of affordable class B and C office space that gives small businesses the starting chance they need. That is the path to lifting all boats. Help small businesses instead of demolishing their launching pad and driving away their clientele. For the press, please see the outline of our better plan for the neighborhood in our circulating statement of principles. We call on the state legislature to finance a complete, professional, and independent cost-benefit analysis comparing our better way to Vernado's plan. Now, before we begin, I want to draw everybody's attention to the basket that is circulating. This is for donations to the food pantry that is right next door. The Friars run that pantry. Please contribute what you can. So now let's learn today a little bit about the human costs of the Vernado plan. First up, I'd like you to meet, if she is here, Angela O'Reilly, the owner of the Molly Wee. 
Mrs. Riley, you're here. here. Okay. Thank you. Please welcome Angela Riley. Good morning, everyone. I am the owner of the Mallory Pub, 402 8th Avenue. We're on the corner of 30th Street and 8th Avenue. I've been there for the last 40 years. Uh, I will be devastated to lose my business. Uh, I mean, for all my employees, for all my customers, for the Ranger fans, the concert goers, everybody that comes to us. Uh, I just hope they can find another way of doing this. It's my livelihood and also uh, sentimental uh, because, like I said, it's in our family for 40 years. Uh, please don't let them do this. Thank you. All right. For the fans of the Molly Wee, Mrs. Riley will be here for a few minutes afterwards. You can interview her if you like. Um, I'd like next to ask uh, George Calderaro to, from the 29th Street Association to just tell us a little bit about the church here and the Franciscan Friars. Thank you, Lynn. This beautiful building behind me is one, as Lynn pointed out, one of dozens of viable, landmark-worthy buildings that's on the chopping block, senselessly, needlessly. It's, uh, the neighborhood, as Lynn pointed out, is full of viable, historic buildings. This, uh, the Church of St. John the Baptist, was built in 1871 on the site of an earlier church. It was designed by famous architect Napoleon Le Brun, models on the Cathedral of Reims in France, renovated extensively just in 1996 to its current fine form. It houses the Bread of Life food pantry in the parish hall, and as a community member, I can attest that it serves hundreds of meals a, a week. The Capuchin Order are one of three orders that arose from the Franciscan movement in the 1500s, they wear the original habit of St. Francis of Assisi, a brown tunic, you've seen them in the neighborhood, live in very small communities. They have taken a vow of poverty, unlike the people who are supporting the Vornado and will benefit from the Vornado plan. They minister to the poor and live lives of great austerity. They're a valuable part of our community and they should stay as well as this beautiful building. Thank you. Hill, owner of Urban Stages here. Francis, if you're here, you're welcome to, I guess you couldn't say, Urban Stages runs a theater company just down the road that is also under threat. Uh, Francis Hill is one of the founders. Um, we have uh, Bill Otterson, a resident of 30th Street, uh, for to introduce himself. Bill, are you here? Go, Bill! Go, Bill! Well, I've been here forever, <laughs> 45 years as a resident. What? Could you hear me? No. No. All right, I guess this is uh, rock and roll, Mike. you got to put your lips on it. I've been a resident here 45 years, and I've been through thin and thinner, and some thick and thin. I've only been uh, attacked twice by mobs, and, uh, but I've survived, and I'd like to stay here. If they get their way, they're gonna demolish this entire block. And that means, that means I'm out on the street. And because it's federal money behind all this, there's no compensation to speak of. I think it's seven thousand dollars. Here's your money. Get the hell out. Anyway, I came here in 1968 and was told by friends who I knew from summer theaters, go down to the Roundabout, which was on 26th Street at that time. They're looking for replacements for the importance of being earnest. And I had played that in high school. They said, well, tell them it's college. I went down there, immediately they said, you played Algernon, can you also do Jack? I said, well, yes. And then it worked out that they had me one night as Algernon and the next night as Jack. 
anyway, that's, that's my roots. They go back that far here. Now, I'm being told that's enough. Oh, I don't like touching my lips on this. Anybody, we need your help to keep our homes, our businesses, and to beat this insane movement to demolish our neighborhood. I want to introduce Amadou Afi, who is from Senegal, who owns the, the wonderful restaurant down the street that I urge everybody to patronize. The food is great. Can you tell us about your business, Amadou, and your life? Uh, thank you for everybody for coming over here, uh, supporting us, supporting our businesses. Uh, my name is uh, Amadou Achi. I come from Senegal and I own a business uh, called BND Halal Restaurant, uh, Amadou 263. Uh, we've been in our business uh, for 10 years or 12 years now. And uh, we come back just from the COVID. We are not recovered yet. And if we demolish this area, it's going to be uh, start all over again or the end of our business right now. So we will not accept this one and we're going to fight against this uh, demolition. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All together, all together, we're going to win. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. We have uh, Sam Turvey from Rethink, uh, who, who has the better plan for the transit system. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I'd like to start by recommending the 30th Street and the blocks scheduled for demolition under the Governor and Vornado's plan should petition to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Then the powers that be will support us instead of America's own oligarchs like Stephen Roth, a suspiciously large contributor to the governor's campaign. And when I say governors, that's not with an apostrophe, that's plural. Half a million dollars to this governor, half a million dollars to that governor, and Steve gets the right to kick people, drop kick the neighborhood out the window because they're small fry. Many of you feel the way the Ukrainians do. Losing your homes and businesses is traumatic, whatever the cause. You stood by your city and state through COVID only to be told to get lost, and they somehow think this is an equitable plan. I am so pleased to be on 30th Street, what journalist and author Roberta Gratz rightly calls a vital part of one of the last truly diverse mixed-use neighborhoods in Manhattan where 6,000 people live and 2,000 businesses thrive in some 40-plus buildings. While they promise to add affordable housing, the best way to ensure affordable housing in this neighborhood is to not tear it down in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, musicians, priests, friars, furriers, Irish tavern owners, and West Senegalese restaurant owners, and many more, live and work in a great swath of our pre-war architecture. Yet the false prophet Stephen Roth of Ornado sees the opportunity for him and his shareholders and has convinced our government to declare this neighborhood blighted and to tear it down so that the false prophet can make more profits. This neighborhood does not need to be torn asunder to expand Penn Station to the south. If a through running model is adopted, there is no need to demolish this block. The MTA and others would like to question our credentials to say that, but I have a better idea. Put them under oath and ask them why something that is happening in every, of our, every one of our peer cities throughout the world can't happen here until 2080 by their estimation. I'm almost finished, Lynn. I know I'm taking a little time. Steve Roth is so delusional that he calls the destruction of this neighborhood the promised land for Vornado shareholders. He and his shareholders stock price is all but in free fall. This whole plan has all the earmarks of a corporate bailout at the expense of this neighborhood. The state should be ashamed of itself as should all of the bought supporters of Ornado's own style of replacement theory. Their theory is let's get rid of this riffraff and bring in class A office towers and proper folks. 
I remember a minister who isn't with us today, but would have a few simple words for Mr. Roth and his accomplices. And I use the word accomplices purposefully. <clears throat> Roth and the ESD insist this neighborhood is blighted. But as Minister Martin Luther King Jr. used to say, a lie cannot last forever. <laughs> Dr. King told us other things. On the eve of his death, he told us that he had been to the mountaintop and that he had seen the promised land and that while he might not get there with us, we would get to the promised land. And I am sure as I look at you people and this architecture and this block, the colors, the diversity, the architectural styles, I promise you that this is exactly what Dr. King was talking about when he said we would get to a promised land. Don't let anyone steal that promise from you, especially not Steve Roth and Vornado. Thank you very much. Uh, Eugene Sigliano, resident of 30th Street, please. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Eugene Sinigaliano, and I've lived with my family at 251 West 30th Street for over 40 years. I'm here representing all the people, thousands of businesses, residents, and employees that will lose their homes, offices, and jobs with multiple city blocks destroyed by this outdated, fatally flawed, and big real estate interest Penn Station proposal. Their general project plan is simply a big real estate grab designed as transit improvement, and this is the important point. It does not focus on, have direct control, or even have any completed transit or track improvement plans. It's like someone going to a bank and saying, I need a home improvement loan. I don't have any plans. I haven't seen an architect. I don't know how much it'll cost. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but just give me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and we'll see what I do. Except in this case, it's 40 to $50 billion. All the residential families in my building have lived here for 40 years. Most of my neighbors, including the friars that live here at St. John's, have been here for many years. Like many New Yorkers who have seen the dark times and later the rebirth of our city, we spent our lives here. We volunteered. We've given back to the city we love to help build a stronger, more inclusive New York. And this block is inclusive, as you can well see. Yet Penn Station's proposal doesn't protect anyone. The business is the residents and is actually carefully calculated to use a federal entity to displace, rent stabilize senior families so that they can rob and strip away our legal New York rent stabilization. The fathers of St. John will also lose their home. The fellow priests, their community, their family, and this beautiful church and shrine will be destroyed. Life as we know it in our neighborhood will be lost forever. My wife and her family were here many years ago when Padre Pio was made a saint by Pope John Paul II. And it's unbelievable that they would tear down a beautiful church and shrine for their stuff. And they've even used a completely false and outdated neighborhood condition study to justify that our neighborhood is blighted. Our neighborhood is not blighted. There's been millions and millions of dollars pumped in from private capital into our neighborhood. My own building, they've spent $4 million in renovations over just the past four years. It's false. They know it's false. It's been documented, yet they have said nothing and not made any updates to their study. Basically, the pandemic saw Midtown Manhattan lose hundreds of commercial tenants leaving empty skyscrapers with millions of square feet of empty office space behind. The highest office vacancy rate since 1994. At the same time, New York suffers from an affordable housing crisis and homelessness. So why does it make sense to bulldoze a vibrant working class neighborhood that includes, already includes affordable and rent stabilized housing, affordable business offices, and historic buildings just to build massive amounts of new commercial space no one needs? Here's the answer. The short answer is, it doesn't. But reason has never been a sufficient excuse for corporate greed in excess, and Steve Roth knows it. So next up, we have Luana Green from Penn South. And uh, Luana. Luana! Yeah. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Luana Green. I'm a president of Chelsea Reform Democratic Club, and I'm here today to talk about the realities of this plan. Unfortunately, I don't have all the detailed information about the money that's going in and what threw away and so on and so forth. What I'm talking about today is this neighborhood. I've lived in this neighborhood for 50 years. I've seen this neighborhood go from bad to worse to good to bad to good. And I love this neighborhood. I love this peop the people in this neighborhood. I love the diversity of this neighborhood. I love the changes that this neighborhood has gone through. However, I don't love the new development. I don't love the plan of having people evicted from their homes. I don't love the plan of having institutions that have been here for years taken away to be replaced by buildings that have no, no form or function. Let me tell you something. Let's be honest about this plan. This this plan doesn't serve anybody but the people who have money. This plan does not serve the community. This plan does not serve the residents. This plan does not serve the mentally ill. This plan does not serve the homeless. This plan does not serve the I just want to mention to everybody, before my people leave here, these are my visually disabled musicians that we've been doing a workshop for on this block for five years, yeah. over five years. Okay, they're all from 23rd Street. They walk over here. They get around somehow. This area is not blighted. They're upset. I want them to say a few words about what they think about saving this block. This is Hello, Robert everyone. Weeks. My name is Robert Weeks. I'm a musician. I'm all the way from Guyana. And I want to say today, they can do all the extension of Penn Station without disturbing this block. Yeah, How they can right. make the extended Q train line to 96th Street without moving everybody from there. There's no one move 
didn't build all the station, they do the truck work, they do the this, they do the that without moving everyone. These trains are not running outside, they're running on the there. So, in the name of Jesus, this block will stay here. Thank you, Albert Weeks, for the big ten. This is Barrio. Yeah. Ladies, and Ladies and gentlemen, we have been doing concerts, we have been doing different things to really bring awareness to everyone. You don't need to see to do what we got to do. This block here and this whole neighborhood should stay. They didn't knock down the post office, did they? No. Did they, 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 they knock down things that they feel that they're going to make money for them? No. no. They didn't do that. What they're looking for is M-O-N-E-Y. And guess right. what? We're going to keep what we got. So see you there. Have a nice day. Thank you. Here's Anthony Stewart. Hey, my name is Anthony Stewart, and this block means a lot. I'm a musician. I'm visually impaired. This block, uh, this block means to me. I've been coming here for five years for music. This is my safe haven for my mental illness. And they cannot shut people, they, 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 they cannot do this. This is, un, this is unhumane. God, Jehovah, is upset about this. And, we, and this is not right. Keep, keep this, leave the station alone. Thank you. I just want to mention, there's a music store right there. There's a music store down the block. Steve Metford, and there's world music. Everybody from world music is here now. Thank you, it's a viable neighborhood. Steve has been indispensable in raising money, awareness throughout the neighborhood. Roberta Galp from uh, West Six. I have been in Chelsea since 1978. I have seen a lot of things that bother me. Back in 1978, St. Vincent's closed their outpatient pharmacy. That's right. And I'm telling you, people were suffering, and I fought against that. And then Barney's wanted to move down 17th Street and take the affordable housing. And we fought against that and we lost. And I sort of backed off for a while because I was so disgusted with our elected officials as I am today. I'm gonna to be the one to say it. Look at your elected officials. We elected them. Are they here today? They are not here today. They are, they should be ashamed of themselves. I have been involved in rights and supporting tenants. I took a little time off to do breast cancer advocacy, which I still do, but I am still passionate about tenants. And when I heard about this, what was happening, I wondered, why didn't I know anything about it? I, I'm not that involved, but they kept it a secret. Right. Who kept it a secret? Right. Your elected officials. And those elected officials want to bring in their friends in the next election. Why am I here? Why am I taking my time? Because I am passionate about making sure this doesn't happen again. 2,000 tenants. I want you to think when you go to vote, did these people testify at the hearings? Did my person testify? Because I want to tell you, my person testified. And that's why I spend my free time, and I don't have a lot of free time. I do cancer advocacy, I work with patients, I have a job. As a matter of fact, my office was right around the corner. It's not now, I'm grateful for that, but my office would have been demolished. I have a small business, it's been around for 38 years. But in my spare time, I have a husband and a rescue dog. And in my spare time, I am spending every minute getting somebody elected who I trust will do the right thing because every one of our elected officials have turned their back. Every one of them. So I hope you keep this in mind and you keep it be when you go to the poll. Thank you. My speechwriter is behind me. But thank you very much. Thank you. We got two more speakers. Uh, we have Brad Bobo uh, from the 29 or from the City Club of New York. Thank you, Lynn. My name is Brad Vogel, and I'm here on behalf of the City Club of New York. Ten years from now, when you walk out of Penn Station, will you still arrive in New York City? And that is a question that we all have to ask, because the state's plan comes in like an ogre with a club, 
And it comes to take and sweep this block, this neighborhood, and an, yet another chunk of our city of its culture, of its heritage, and as, as she just mentioned, it could be yours tomorrow. And for some of the people standing here today, as we have heard, it is here now. So I'm here to talk about some of the buildings that are at risk, the architecture that's also at risk in addition to the people who are very much at risk and the businesses and the institutions. We're talking about buildings like this one behind me, which was built in the 1870s by Napoleon Lebrun, a really irreplaceable landmark. That's we have buildings like, or structures like the Gimbel Sky Bridge over 32nd Street. And I don't know if, if you've ever experienced this, but when I walk around the corner and I see that sky bridge floating in the air, it, it gives you that sense of magic that makes this city worth living in. And we're talking about buildings like the Penn Station Service Building over on 31st, which is one of the only full-size remnants from the original Penn Station complex that was demolished in the 1960s. That is your sample of what that lost landmark was like in terms of scale, texture, etc. But what I wanted to mention is there are buildings in this area that are subject to demolition that the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission has determined are eligible to be designated as city landmarks. And that would mean that they couldn't be demolished. Right. They're afraid because the state will come in with this plan and undo whatever they designate. And I say, I don't care. Do your job and designate these buildings. If they are worthy, then designate. And one last thing I want to mention. When we look down this block, when we look around the corner, when we look at these massive buildings, buildings like Hotel Pennsylvania, which is currently being demolished before our eyes. Do you know how much embodied carbon, embodied energy, horses, humans, machines, how much fossil fuel, how much carbon has been emitted to build all of this stuff? And it is sitting there in these buildings. When you demolish it, it is lost. This is an environmental catastrophe. This is deeply, deeply unsustainable. And with that, I hope this plan is defeated. Thanks, Closing us out with some rabble rousing, we have Leila Lagaseco, chair of the CB5 Land Use Committee, who has been studying this project for the past two years. Thank you so much, Lynn, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So my name is Leila Lokizico, I'm the chair of the Land Use, Housing and Zoning Committee of Community Board 5 and uh, we actually learned from this horrendous catastrophic project two years ago uh, in the midst of COVID and I remember calling Lynn and telling her, Lynn, this is what the state is proposing and she said, I can't believe it. I was like, yeah, let me send you the documents and then I spoke to Sam and he was like, what the hell, this is just crazy. And uh, I said, okay, you know, I'm the chair of the Land Use Committee, so I'm going to be a part of this uh, community engagement process. And the governor said, no, you're opposed to the project, so you're not gonna be on. I was like, what do you mean? I, I, I'm the rep for CV5. No, we actually don't want CV5. They appointed our retired district manager who had moved out of the city altogether to actually be the rep for CB5. The guy was like, I I'm not even on the job anymore. What are you talking about? What are you doing? We had to fight and fight and fight. Eventually, I blew the whistle, went to the press, and then Cuomo and his cronies had no choice but to appoint me. What they did though, they also extended the uh, community engagement, so they appointed Eugene Sinigaliano. Um, and then what did they do? They put all of us on gag order. You wonder why you don't know about it? Because for two years, even to this day, That's anything right. that happens in these community engagement meetings, yes. I'm not at liberty to share with you. I'm on gag order. Ridiculous. That's insane. Eugene That's is on gag order. That's We're not allowed to talk about it. This is insane. This is pure insanity. In the meantime, Tornado is fully privy to all the details. Oh. They're not on gag orders. Right. They can share it with their investors, for example. And we, the community, are not allowed to talk to our community people. In the meantime, I am so proud to be here. Look at us, look at us, look at us. 
We have created a true coalition, a groundswell. This is the grassroots movement that New York knows how to organize and put together. I am so proud to be here with all of you today. Glad to have you. So let me tell you what we do going forward. You've heard why the plan is flawed. You heard all the issues with the plan. You've heard the greed. You've heard why the words of urban planning collides with greed and corporate welfare. This is terrible. All right, so what do we need to do? We need to continue to organize. One thing that I want to convey to you, you're gonna hear it over and over and over from the governor, from others, groups that may be affiliated with uh, Vornado, you can't beat this plan. You can't defeat it. You know, it's gonna happen anyway. Settle for, you know, a couple hundred units of fill the blank that, you know, may me make the community happy. Don't settle. Don't settle for less. Don't settle ever. This plan is bad through and through. Let me be very clear. We all agree Penn Station needs to be revitalized. We don't need this plan. We don't need 10 towers to fix Penn Station. 10 towers have nothing to do with infrastructure. So let's, let's be strong. Let's remain together and let's continue to fight and advocate for what we know is the right path of action. Let me break a little bit of good news. We've been sold this plan under the guise of needing money to fix Penn Station. Well, guess what? The president, President Biden, last year signed the bipartisan infrastructure law. That's right. We have a pool of money that exceeds $60 billion. Let me repeat, $60 billion with a B. All right? We do not need a value capture little plan to fund Penn Station. The feds are going to commit to 80% of the tab. Let's make sure we continue to work with our federal partners so that they do deliver. And then let's have New York write a check. We are a wealthy state. We do not need a value capture framework. This word is actually so absurd that it makes my, my blood boil. So let's remain strong. Let's remain united. We have a lot coming up. We need to attend more hearings. We need to continue to mobilize. We need to continue to tell the governor that this plan is ill-guided, that she is maybe poorly advised, and that she needs to come to her senses. We need to make our voices heard loud and clear, and I know I can count on you. Value we capture, if you just want to recall, means we, we replace everything with 10 towers and we speculate on the rents that they might generate in 20 years and we'll borrow off that. That's value recapture. We know it's total nonsense. So let's stop for a question and answer. If, if any of the press has questions or if anybody has a question, please let me know. Otherwise, we're all available. A question, okay. Look, the primary is a couple weeks away. The government seems to be ahead. And the only way we can stop her is the direct action. I think, I, and this is my opinion only, having lived through the same type of thing that you're living now with urban renewal. That's uh, right. I you think you that, might have to lay down in front I of the think, I think the thing to do is shut down 8th Avenue, and you watch every media in the world will come and cover the story. That's right. And we got to do That's it right. before the primary. Yes. Because after the primary, she don't give a damn. That's right. I think you're right. Anybody else? Yeah. Comment? Yeah. Question? Yeah. 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 So I just want to say, we have a sign right there behind this gentleman who's holding the big sign. And it says, stop demolishing our city. So I urge everybody, stop demolishing our city. Please chant with me. Come on, Stevie. Stop, stop demolishing, demolishing our city. city. Stop demolishing our 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 city. That's great. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, also, one day that you need to mark down, this is really very, very important. It is our understanding that ESD, the Empire State Development Corporation, that is the entity that is spearheading this horrendous plan, 
will have a hearing with the directors on June 30th, all right? We do not know if it's going to be in person or remote, but we understand that there will be an opportunity for the public to testify. This will be the first time and maybe the only time that we have a chance to actually address the directors directly. We sat through hours of hearings. You, you know it for those who were there, right? 11 hours. The last hearing ended at 1.30 a.m., all right? This time, if the, the directors were not in attendance. They made us suffer through an entire marathon and they probably never heard it. So we need to make sure that we show up en masse. We need to make sure that the directors stay and listen to what we have to say. So mark it down. June 30th, usually the meetings start, start at 9.30. Make provisions to you know, be available and uh, Lynn and the coalition will make sure that you know, we circulate the exact date. I just want to urge everybody, if you're breaking for lunch, to patronize the Molly Wee down at the end of the block or B&D Halal, which is also right down at the edge of the yeah, block. Thank you.